All right, thank you for the very nice introduction. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, private and intersection from uh, homomorphic encryption. This is joint work with Kim Lane, also in Microsoft Research, and Peter was the last speaker. And uh, so for this, uh, we'll be back into the semi-honest world. And uh, so the setting we're considering here is uh, asymmetric private and intersection, where uh, basically we assume that, that the receiver who's supposed to get the intersection has a much smaller set than the sender. And so the receiver can be some kind of uh, mobile uh, app, and the sender can be a high-end server. So what is some application of this asymmetric PSI? Uh, well, one of them is uh, private contact discovery, uh, and I will elaborate that on the next slide. The other one is malware detection, where a client has certain softwares installed on its PC, and uh, a server has a list of hashes of uh, malwares, and they want to securely compare uh, if there are certain malwares installed on, on the client's computer. And uh, also, there's this ad conversion that Peter already mentioned. So I won't go into details here. So in uh, private contact discovery, uh, you are a user running some uh, mobile app, which is probably like some kind of messaging app, like WhatsApp or Signal. And you have a phone book containing all the phone numbers of people you know. And the server uh, will have a full list of phone numbers containing of every user who registered to the service. And you want to know uh, which one of your friends has also registered to the service without uh, revealing all the people you know to the server. So in this case, you can run an asymmetric PSI because uh, your phone book is likely much smaller than the other set. All right. And uh, so previous solutions have very good performance, but uh, they don't actually target specifically this unbalanced case. Uh, usually in this previous work, you assume that both sides uh, had this, roughly the sets of same size. And uh, so there are two set-of-the-art works uh, by Pinkas et al. in 2016 and uh, Kolesnikov et al. also in 2016. These achieve very fast performance in the semi-honest setting, uh, but uh, note that the communication cost is linear in the sender set, which we assume is much bigger than the receiver set. So this is kind of like not optimal, so we want to improve this. So uh, let me introduce our solution. It is a fast asymmetric PSI protocol, which is based on fully homomorphic encryption. And uh, we can achieve communication costs linear in a smaller set and logarithm in a larger set. So in certain settings, this can be 40 times smaller communication than previous work. So in order to achieve this performance, we have combined techniques from both the PSI world and the FHE world in order to get uh, the best performance possible. And uh, we actually have an implementation of our library based on the seal homomorphic encryption library uh, developed within Microsoft. All right, so, so here's some uh, advertisement for seal. Uh, it's available on this website, it's open source, and uh, a new version is to be released soon with major performance improvement. So uh, feel free to check it out. All right, so now let me introduce the basic idea of our uh, private side intersection based on homomorphic encryption. So uh, in the most easy setting, suppose that the receiver only has a single item in its set and the sender has uh, a set of B items from X1 to XB, assumed to be in some finite field F. And you can evaluate this polynomial, which is just basically a product of the differences, and it will be zero if Y is in the set X, and it will be non-zero if it's otherwise. But this evaluation reveals something about the set X. So in order to randomize the result, the sender needs to sample some non-zero random value in the field and multiply it to the polynomial. So in this case, the polynomial below will evaluate to zero if y is in x, and it will evaluate to a random number if uh, it's not the case. So in order to do this uh, homomorphically, we just need the receiver to send a homomorphically encrypted version of y, and the sender will evaluate the polynomial using FHE and send back the result. And in this case, the receiver will then decrypt the result, get the evaluated polynomial, and, uh, and regard the 
element to be in the intersection if the plain text is zero. So that's pretty simple. And uh, so I've just described our strawman protocol uh, where you need uh, one round of communication uh, for this private intersection to happen. So this is pretty easy because we assume FHE, but uh, in practice, if you implement this Strawman protocol, it's not going to be efficient at all for several reasons. So first of all, if you want to uh, implement it directly, then you need to send one ciphertext per element of the receiver. So if the receiver has about 1,000 of elements, you need to send 1,000 ciphertexts. And it is asymptotically good, but uh, uh, practically it's very bad because for the FHE ciphertext, uh, each of them is kind of not too small. So if you need to send two times the small set size ciphertext, it is a, good, uh, a big burden. And another problem which may be more severe is that the sender needs to perform a high degree homomorphic computation in this protocol. And the depth of the circuit is equal to logarithm of the uh, bigger set size. So this is not desirable. All right, so, so in, or, in order to make it possible, we have to employ several optimizations. So in this work, we have used um, cuckoo hashing techniques plus splitting techniques from PSI literature and uh, batching, windowing, and modular switching techniques from uh, FHE. And all these techniques, I should mention that they have different parameters. So in the end, we have to play an optimization game to find the best uh, combined parameters in order to achieve a good performance. OK, so let me uh, start introducing these techniques. Uh, so the first one is cuckoo hashing, also mentioned in the previous talk. Here, the basic idea is that the sender and receiver will agree on um, a certain number of hash functions. In this case, we choose three. And the receiver will hash its set uh, into some hash table using cuckoo hashing, where the sender will hash its set using all three hash functions into a multi-column -col hash table. So, so here in this picture, for simplicity, we have assumed that uh, the items each set has is the same. So suppose we have x, y, and z, and the receiver has hashed it into the three locations in the three colors, and the senders uh, will have uh, nine locations occupied in its uh, multi-column table for x, y, and z. And now suppose we want to insert a new item w, uh, but as shown on this graph, all the three locations for W are taken. So in this case, what cuckoo hashing does is that it will simply put W in the first location, which is uh, the pl place where X was. It will pop X and try to reinsert X. And notice that on the sender side, there's nothing complicated to be done. We just need to add in the three locations from W. So here, uh, uh, we're lucky that the third location for x is empty, so we'll just reinsert x in that spot. OK, and uh, that's cuckoo hashing. We'll talk a little bit more about this practical performance later. But let me move on to uh, another optimization, which is batching. So this is a commonly used technique in FHE, where you can use one ciphertext to encode not just a number, but a vector of numbers, and to achieve uh, SMMD functionality, where uh, the operations like addition and multiplication are done coefficient-wise. So for our parameters, we can um, batch the receiver's hash table into the receiver set size times a small expansion factor uh, divided by n plain text. So n, in this case, is relatively large. It's about 8,000 or 16,000. And uh, the expansion factor is actually not that big. So by using three hash functions, we found that empirically, we only need to have a 1.4a blow up in order to fit all the receiver's elements into this hash table. So, so in practice, for our uh, experiments, we find that uh, almost always one ciphertext is enough. And this ensures that hashing will fail with probability at most 2 to the minus 40. Right, and on the sender side, remember that uh, 
we have uh, the cardinality of x items, and each of them is repeated three times, and we have a table of uh, n rows. So in the end, because the cardinality of x is much larger than n, usually in the millions, uh, the number of plain text we need is roughly equal to three times the cardinality divided by this batching parameter n. So uh, overall, this technique will help us drop the communication from uh, roughly equal to the uh, receiver set size to the receiver set size divided by n. And the depth of the evaluation drops from logarithm in the big set to logarithm of bit sets divided by n. Well, maybe multiplied by 3. So asymptotically, because you can regard n as a constant, these are the same. But in practice, it makes a big difference. All right. And uh, there's uh, another optimization technique we use, which is called windowing. So recall that in our protocol, the sender needs to homomorphically evaluate this polynomial. Uh, which has degree b, and it has several options of doing that. The first option is the receiver just sends the encryption of y, and the sender will evaluate this polynomial using some kind of tree-like evaluation. So you can think of it as that the, re the sender will split the polynomial into left part and right part and recursively evaluate those parts. And the second option is the receiver will send encryption for power of y for all powers up to b. And then the sender can uh, expand this polynomial and just do a linear evaluation. And uh, a third option is that the receiver can send not just all, not all powers of y, but only the power of two powers. So it can send encryption of y, y squared, y to the 4, and so on. And then the sender can compute all the powers from these and then proceed uh, in as in option two. So here are some comparison for these three approaches. The first option uh, has small communication but very large depth. So it's not as desirable. The second option has constant depth one, but you need to send B ciphertext. So the asymptotic communication is equal to the product of the two set sizes. So that is not good either. And for the third option, you can show that its communication is linear in a small set size and logarithm in a big set size. And in practice, this is uh, often the best uh, approach. And as for the depth, it becomes double logarithm in the big set size. So it, it is also always, almost always a small constant. So in the end, we chose this third approach seems to give the best trade-off. OK, and uh, yet another technique we use is splitting. So remember that on the last slide, we have reduced the HE evaluation depth to double log. But even that is sometimes not desirable. We want to make it even smaller. So one way we can do this is the sender can split its B columns into a collection of B over alpha columns each, and then just evaluate kind of uh, alpha polynomials of degree B over alpha. So in some sense, repeating this process alpha times. So uh, there are several advantages of this uh, idea. So the first one is that uh, the sender can kind of reuse the encrypted powers of Y because in each of this polynomial, the y is the same. So there's no extra computation that's needed once you have encryption of all powers. And the second advantage is that the depth is further smaller from double log in this number of columns b to double log of b over alpha. And that will buy us some more um, uh, freedom in choosing the parameters. OK, and there, there's some side effect to this approach. Uh, if we use the splitting idea, then the reply ciphertext size is alpha times larger. So remember, previously we had about uh, using the batching technique, only one ciphertext to be sent back. Now we need about alpha ciphertext. So uh, this increases communication, uh, but w we have another optimization to, uh, to reduce the communication. 
All right, so, so this technique is called modular switching in FHE. So this is another commonly used technique uh, to reduce the backward communication. So uh, usually in homomorphic encryption, the untrusted party will perform some evaluation on encrypted data, and then it will send it back to someone who's holding the key to decrypt. But usually the ciphertext is very large. This is due to the fact that in order to evaluate uh, homomorphically, you need to have a lot of room for the noise to grow. So usually the initial ciphertexts are quite large. However, uh, for the final results, there's actually a way to compress it so that you can still decrypt to get the correct result without having to, um, to send back a large ciphertext. So there are some technical details, but basically if you have um, a ciphertext in this uh, fine vocalturing scheme, also in the uh, BGV schemes as well, uh, you can do a divide and round procedure to make it so, so that the ciphertexts are much smaller, but uh, the underlying plaintexts are the same. So the basic idea is that this division and rounding will make it so that uh, the ciphertexts are uh, reduced from size log Q to size log Q prime, but the noise ratio is uh, roughly kept the same. And uh, in order for the decryption to be correct, you only need the no noise ratio to be below a certain threshold. So in practice, we tried it on our protocol, and uh, this can help us achieve about 5 to 10x uh, reduction in communication, depending on the FHE parameters we use. So uh, with all these optimizations combined, we can introduce our full protocol, which is, uh, uh, contains a lot of additions from the Strawman protocol. So first, the receiver will cuckoo hash its set and then use uh, homomorphic batching it into uh, a number of plain text. On the other hand, the server will use multi-hashing to hash its set into, uh, into multi-column hash tables and then use hash, uh, batching to batch it into B plain text. So this second green box can be, uh, uh, can be done offline, so we can count it as uh, pre-processing time. And then uh, the server will split uh, the plain text into alpha subset. In the online step, uh, the uh, receiver will send encryptions of power of two powers of y to the sender for each of its plain text vector y. And then for each of the, the subsets of plain text the sender gets, it can homomorphically evaluate the polynomial by uh, sampling some random vectors and uh, evaluate the product of differences times the random number. So as a result, this, uh, the sender will obtain encryptions of this kind of final result uh, before it uh, performs modular switching on these ciphertexts to reduce their sizes. And finally, these ciphertexts are sent back to the receiver. And the receiver decrypts and gets the intersection as the result. So that's the full protocol. And here is the table in the paper for the um, performance of this. Uh, so we noticed that uh, in this case, we um, restrain to the case where the receiver set size is either uh, about 5, 1,500 or uh, 10, uh, 10, 11,000. Sender set size is either 1 million or 16 million. And we compared our protocol with the two uh, previous work. So the red numbers are where our protocol are better in terms of either communication or the total running time. So in this case, we have included um, several different settings. Uh, regarding to the network band width. So in the uh, setup where the network is kind of slow, uh, for example, for uh, 10 Mbps or 1 Mbps, our protocol can be much faster. And also 
for communication in megabytes, it can achieve up to, uh, I think, at least uh, 40 times uh, reduction. And uh, in some ongoing work, we have um, improved our results much further. Um, so, th so this is combining different techniques, uh, both from um, implementation of the seal library and optimizing certain parts of our PSI protocol. And in this graph, I think uh, if we're comparing online computation time for a uh, receiver of 5,000 items and sender of 16 million items, it can ach achieve a running time of less than four seconds. And so both in computation and communication, it's much better than the other two work. And moreover, I think I just asked Peter that this is true even in the fast network setting. So, so some uh, uh, summary is that our protocol is based on fully homomorphic encryption and is optimized for unequal set sizes where the receiver set is much smaller. And uh, in this case, we can achieve very low communication, which is linear in the smaller set and logarithm in the larger set. And uh, on the other hand, these other two approaches pass communication linear in the larger set. So it's one of the major differences. So conclusion is that in the asymmetric PSI setting, uh, using FHE is a competitive solution with small communication cost. And I want to mention some future directions. So one thing is that uh, our protocol in this paper only handles items in, uh, of at most 32 bits. And uh, in the ongoing work, we have generalized it to work with arbitrary size items. And also, um, uh, we have been asked by reviewers whether we can handle this other case where instead of the receiver, we have the sender have a smaller atom and re uh, receiver has a much larger set. Sorry, sender has a small set. And uh, this is also ongoing work. And multi-party PSI and uh, size revealing PSI has been mentioned. And also PSI with item retrieval is the same as uh, PSI with associated data that Peter mentioned. So I want to say that there's also been this uh, work on intersection sum. So this is in a scenario where, for example, Google and Tesla want to uh, run this PSI um, for some ad conversion uh, comparison. And so in this case, you can imagine that Tesla may want to know the total number uh, of revenue in terms of dollars of how many of its uh, how many cars are sold times each of the car's individual value. So this is the private intersection sum, and it has some uh, uh, good applications. But uh, the work in this area, there was one paper by people in Google, and I think it uses costly public key operations. So there's some um, opportunity to improve on that. And lastly, uh, we can also think about whether malicious PSI can be built using FHE. So some nice area to work on. And uh, with that, uh, I'll conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, it's very nice work. I didn't imagine that uh, fully homomorphic encryption can be uh, applied this efficiently to this problem. Uh, I want to compare it to another solution to the uh, to PSI with unequal set sizes, where uh, the parties run an oblivious PRF computation for each item of the sender, and the client receives the uh, value of the PRF for that for that input for all of his inputs, and then the sender sends uh, an encryption, the encryptions, the output of the PRF for all of its items. So basically, the, the overhead, the, the communication is linear in the size of the larger set. So it's much larger than here, but you only have to send very few bits, like 40 bits or 80 bits per item. Uh, and I think if I, if I understood your table correctly, that the communication is better, would be better up to, say, a million items. And for the 2 to 24 items, I think that your solution is better. 
But the runtime uh, with the solution I described would be much more efficient. It's going to be a fraction of, of a second. Uh, so this is also something you should, you, should, you should compare to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think uh, the technique you mentioned, uh, I don't know for sure, but I think it might be similar to the one in the paper of Koslenikov. I mentioned it's in CCS last year. So basically, they, they use OPRF where the receiver received one OPRF value for each of its ad elements, and yeah. then the sender will send OPRF value for all of its yeah. uh, elements. So the communication is larger, but I think one very good feature is that in their case, uh, the complexity doesn't depend on the item length. So the complexity is kind of a constant, but uh, uh, so, so this improves previous works. Cool. So, so but, but maybe you have some, uh, some improvements on that also. But we, we can talk about it okay. uh, offline. Thanks. Hi, nice work. Uh, you mentioned in your uh, future work, it says that you can, uh, there's another interesting scenario is that the sender has a small set, but the receiver has a larger set. So why cannot just switch the role in your current protocol to suit this uh, needs? Yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, I think our idea is that you switch the protocol until the last stage, and then you do something. Because uh, if you directly switch the protocol, then the sender will get in intersection. So it's kind of like we still want the receiver to get the intersection, oh, okay. but the receiver has a large set. So we need to do something more, but it's not, uh, it is not tremendously more difficult than But than you, you, can, you, can, you can always encrypt all your items in a larger set and uh, let the, the one who gets the result to send the encryption because you are in a semi honest model. So if you approach it in a naive way, only uh, add on a linear communication cost, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, exactly. Thank you. Uh, some optimizations on the homomorphic encryption side. I, I wonder if you experimented with them, and if not, they might change your se selection of parameters. So one thing, you can try to use the uh, patterson stockmeyer polynomial evaluation routine. When you evaluate just a single polynomial, you get significantly better performance than the naive methods. Uh, the other one, if you don't do that and do compute all the powers, then what you have in your hand is essentially just applying a linear transformation, right? And then you can just think about it as a generic linear transformation and apply tools for doing that impact version, impact ciphertext, which is often a lot faster than trying to manually uh, hardwire the uh, linear transformation that you have. So all of these, it's probably just constant factor, but it could change the selection of parameters when you optimize for things. Yeah, 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 thank you. So uh, for the Patterson's Doc Mayer, uh, when we are writing this paper, uh, I wasn't aware of this technique. So uh, it, it should be, uh, we should be able to use it directly to improve the performance. So one thing I'm uh, not sure about is that because we use so many techniques to uh, reduce the depth, in the end, the degree of the polynomial we evaluate can be very small. So I think Patterson stock mayor. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, so I think that would be one thing we can try out uh, later. That's very helpful. For the linear transform, uh, I'm not sure if I understand. So maybe I can ask uh, afterwards. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's cool that you're using FHE. I, my question is more basic. Uh, do you really need to use it? Or? I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't get Why FHE? Couldn't just use... Um, it's a simple computation, right? Uh, why FHE? Uh, degree of polynomial size, but maybe you're representing a different way. Was it communication? Or it's cool that you're using it. You mean FHE compared to additive HE? Multipli yeah, multiplicative. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you, so if you... Yeah, so I mean, if, if you go with uh, the option two in the slides, then you, yeah, you, you can do it with additive HE, I guess. So the problem is that I don't know if um, there's, there's uh, available... Um, Additive HE techniques that can give you like a good throughput. 
So, so that's one thing I'm wondering. So if you use lattice-based approach, it's probably similar throughput. And if you use uh, other additive HC schemes, I'm not sure. That. Okay, but you had the library and it was, okay, that's why you use it then. Yeah, 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 uh, of course. Uh, one, one reason that uh, we chose to use uh, FHE is that we have this library available. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>